Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a get ready with me for a girls night out. And it's really a recreation of a look I did last weekend to attend an event with Victoria's Secret. It's very rare when it happens, but it is always so much fun to get dressed up, do your makeup, throw on a cute outfit, and hit the town with the girls. And that is exactly what we did. So I figured why not show you the look I created and chit chat about what it's like going out to those types of events here in Miami. So I did use the Newly Beige palette, which was so much fun. I am having a blast playing with this. I just love it so much. So if you'd like to see how I achieved this very smoky, going out makeup look, just keep watching. My skincare is complete, my eyelids are primed, so I'm starting with a fluffy brush and going into our beautifully beige palette. I'm going to pick up this medium intensity brown shadow right here, and I'm going to very slowly build that up in the crease and buff it out. This is going to be our transition shade, which I've learned now from experience that these eyeshadows do not play around. So I'm starting with just a small amount and then I'm just gonna sort of start to wiggle that around until I'm comfortable buffing all over the crease. And I am going to extend it out a little bit, sort of exaggerate that outer V since we are doing a more smoky dramatic look. Usually I would stay sort of on the outside of the eye, but I am going to bring it in a little bit, so all the way inside and outside the crease. So last week, I was getting ready at this time to go down to the one hotel. The party was in the penthouse, which was so beautiful. They had a gorgeous view of Miami, and tonight, I'm just having dinner at home with my husband. <laughs> so you can't be glamorous every weekend, I suppose. Still a nice night, but I will most likely be in jammies and slippers in the next couple hours instead of sequins and high heels. But it truly was a beautiful venue and I actually had the opportunity to go to the Victoria's Secret party last year that they threw in Miami which was at the Faina Hotel penthouse suite, which the Faina and the One Hotel are my two favorite hotels on South Beach. So if you ever come to Miami, if you live in Miami, check them out if you haven't. They're just so glamorous, so beautiful. And if you like going out at night, you like nightlife, but you're not a club person, like I will never go to a club unless I have a very special reason for being there. But whenever I like to go out, if we do end up on South Beach with the girls or a date night with my husband, generally it's at one of the hotels because they'll have a nice lobby bar or special cocktail bars or they have the best restaurants. And it's sort of fun to be on the scene and feel like you're out and about living the South Beach lifestyle without being in a club so that you can still actually have conversation <laughs> and enjoy each other. So the next step, I'm taking a more flat, sort of traditional looking eyeshadow brush and I'm going to pick up this really dark shade right in the corner. This is the darkest eyeshadow in the palette and I want something somewhat flat because I am sort of packing on the color. And we're creating a halo eye, so I'm going to go on the outer V, outer lid, and I'm also going to go in the inner lid as well, up to the crease slightly in the crease, but not really above it. I wanna keep this low and smoky. A lot of times people will ask me what it's like going to events like the Victoria's Secret Party, going out to blogger events, influencer events with certain brands, with the girls, and the truth is, it is so much fun and it's the best way to meet people, like-minded girls who are smart and talented and creative and just beautiful inside and out. So I always love connecting with people and getting to meet, meet new people and make friends. It really is an amazing 
place to network. At the One Hotel penthouse, you have this gorgeous kind of deck area where you can look out over the bay and you can see the water. And there were flowers everywhere, tons of photo ops, because of course they, they throw these parties, but they expect you to take lots of pictures. And that's one of the fun parts. But it does feel a little bit like work. You have to make sure that you're getting enough photos for Instagram, for stories, tagging the right people, using the right hashtags for the event. But whenever you're out with your girlfriends, they understand because they're doing the exact same thing. So it's always a lot of fun. There's great food, music, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to blend out the crease carefully with my original fluffy brush. One of the best parts of going out with the girls is that you get to run into a lot of people that you don't usually see. You kind of form your core group of people, of course in any situation that you call and you text and you just have that really close connection with. And I've been so lucky to find that group of girls here in Miami, but there are still so many other friends that I've made and acquaintances that I love running into them. And without going to events and parties, you just probably would maybe lose touch or not really see each other as often. At the Victoria's Secret party, we got fitted for a bra, which was really cool because you have an actual staff there to measure you, tell you what size you are. You can ask questions, talk about the different types of bras that they offer. And then we were able to take home a bra, a matching panty, and a kimono. And they also gave us a gift card. So it was a really nice, very generous gift bag that all of the girls got. I can only imagine what their budget was for that event because there were so many girls, probably, it felt like probably a hundred influencers at this event. It was so jam packed. And a lot of times people will think like, oh, I bet it's sort of catty or are the girls competitive in any way? And it's not like that whatsoever. I always find that whenever I attend events like this, I always leave feeling so inspired and uplifted and sort of like rejuvenated because you're with a lot of other women who are juggling work and family and husbands and kids in some instances or school and they are blogging on the side or they have a YouTube channel and so they sort of get it. They're incredibly motivated. Everybody's sharing tips, um, different contacts and everyone's sort of inspiring each other and uplifting one another, patting each other on the back. It, like, it's a very encouraging environment for the most part. I, that's been my experience. I can only speak for myself. So next I'm going to take a little bit of concealer and I've done this trick before. The tiniest bit on a flat brush and I'm going to apply just a little bit directly in the center of the eyelid. What this is gonna do is because even though I've left it blank, you see there's still a little bit of shadow that makes its way in the center. This is going to create that like very smooth canvas so that the shadow we pack on top is brighter and more vibrant. And that's going to create that halo eye effect. So very lightly, and I'm using the Givenchy concealer I'm just going to pack a teeny tiny bit of that directly in the center. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to try to make it as even as possible on both sides. Next, I'm taking another blank eyeshadow brush and I'm picking up this sort of pewter silver metallic eyeshadow right here next to the light sort of flesh toned peach shade and I'm going to pack that directly on top of the concealer. It 
it really just takes it to the next level. You could do this without concealer if you're more comfortable or if you just don't like the appearance that it gives, but I think it really just creates a spectacular finish. As I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be exact, but I am going to sort of make sure that it's soft and blended on both sides. I'm gonna use that brush and then I'm going to go back with the darker shade and just touch up the inner corner and the outer corner. The best part of the party, besides seeing each other, getting dressed up, taking pictures and just chatting and having so much fun, is that point when after the party's over, you've taken as many pictures as you need, you leave and go somewhere else. And that's what we usually try to do. Cause it's just so much easier to get all the girls together that way. We are leaving the events, going back out with the girls. And so we'll go to dinner or go somewhere for a glass of wine and just relax. And that's when you can really let your hair down and kind of let your guard down. You don't have to be sitting up straight all the time, smiling for photos, and you can really just sort of let loose. So after the after party, after the original party, that's usually when we have the most fun. I have my Lancome makeup remover and a Q-tip. I love this makeup remover so much and I thought I was completely out of it. I've gone through so many bottles of this and I recently, I don't know why I was digging underneath the counter. I think I was looking for something for Gary and I discovered this and it was like finding a hidden treasure because I had been out of eye makeup remover. So I discovered I was stocked up after all. So I'm gonna create a nice little straight edge angled up towards my brow. I've cleaned up my cheeks and there really wasn't much fallout. That's been my experience every time I've used that palette. It's one of the reasons why I love it so much. The quality of the shadows is just really incredible. Considering I did a pretty smoky eye on top, not much to clean. So now I'm going to go ahead and prime my face. I'm using the Laura Radiance Primer from Guerlain. I like to use this primer whenever I'm going out for a night with the girls or a date night, any sort of night out makeup because to me that texture, the stickiness that it does leave, and I say stickiness, it's really not sticky, but it just holds makeup in place so well and I feel like it makes the makeup look better and last longer. So I'm going to use my new foundation. I did not use this foundation last week. I forget what I used, but it's become a new favorite. So I'm going in with my Givenchy Tin Couture Everwear 24 hour wear satin finish, full coverage and comfort foundation. I really love this and I'm just going to buff it out with my Bare Minerals brush. So this was the smoothing face brush and I recently did a full review on this foundation, sort of a first impressions, but I wore it to work after I filmed, and the night I wore it, we were doing inventory. So what does that mean? <laughs> it means I was at work bending, arching, just contorting my body for hours at a time until past midnight, counting everything in the store, all of the beauty products in my particular section. It's always the longest night, we do it twice a year. And when I came home from inventory, having filmed in the morning, did a full day of work, my makeup was still perfectly intact. Like no even traces or signs that it was starting to break up anywhere. I was so impressed. So this has quickly become one of my new favorite foundations. The one thing that I could probably update you guys on is the color. I thought this was a perfect shade for me and it still is whenever I'm sunless tanned, but I would say it did oxidize slightly. So I think whenever I came home, I thought, whoa, it looks like I got, <laughs> I got a bit of a tan. 
because it did get a little bit darker. Not the biggest deal in the world, considering I have the shade that I would use whenever I have tanner on my body. So it definitely doesn't change my opinion of the formula because the finish, how it lasted, I mean, I'm still so impressed. And I'm using again my Givenchy Tint Couture Everwear Concealer that matches the foundation. Both of these were sent to me complimentary to review. I mentioned that in my full review video, but just to reiterate, the video isn't sponsored at all. I was simply asked for an honest opinion. And I will always be fair. I think, you know, these are great products and I generally never test or try something that I think I'm going to hate because that's a waste of your time, it's a waste of my time. So anytime you hear me say, oh, this was sent to me complimentary, generally, it's because I've requested to review it. But the brand in general is really impressive. I mean, everything that I've tried from Givenchy has been a hit. The concealer has a radiant finish. I always set my concealer. I know that was a question that some people asked is whether or not I felt like you needed to set the concealer. I just always do personally. Next, I'm going to warm up my complexion with my Soleil Tan de Chanel Cream Bronzer. And I'm gonna use the same brush that I used to apply my foundation. Because I love the way this just stipples and then I can also use it to blend. I love getting dressed up and going out. I don't even necessarily love being out. <laughs> I just love getting ready and getting to take my time to just dress up and pick out a cute outfit. It's always so fun. And we'll always text each other, me and my girlfriends. What are you gonna wear? What's kind of your vibe that you're going for? So that we don't show up wearing something too similar. But actually our styles I think are pretty different, but also so that we still look cute together when we take pictures. The guys just don't understand. They don't really get the fun of it. <laughs> For blush, I'm using the NARS Liquid Orgasm. A little bit goes such a long way, and this is truly one of my favorite blushes. They have a couple other shades. I believe there's four in total. I'm really tempted to get a few others. So I just kind of put a tiny dot on the back of my hand, pick it up with this duo fiber brush, wipe my hand on a towel, <laughs> and then I will sort of just lightly go over the apples of my cheeks and blend it back. To highlight my cheeks, I'm going to use the Opal Highlighter from Chanel. And highlighting is probably the best part of getting ready to go out because I always just go crazy with my highlighter. I do, I'm not even going to apologize for it. It's just a habit I have. I will put it on my shoulders, my arms, my entire body. Sometimes I get a little bit carried away, so I'm going to try to make this as pretty as possible, but if I was not if I was not filming this process, I would just be going all over and just getting wild with it. To finish up the eyes, I'm taking a small precision brush and I'm going to mirror and sort of mimic what we have on top on the bottom. So I'm going to take this dark shade underneath the dark parts and then directly in the center, I'm going to go into this metallic shade. So I'm going to start with the dark eyeshadow and I'm going to be as careful as possible and then I am going to soften this.
like buffing it out with a pencil brush because it just keeps it nice and soft. Next, I'm going to fill in my eyebrows and do black liquid liner on the top lash line, wing it out, and then I'll be back to finish up. My brows are complete, so I am going to go into my opal highlighter and I'm going to highlight the brow bone and the inner corner of the eye. I have a brand new mascara to try. I'm really excited. This is just a sample. It's called the Curler. It's the new YSL mascara. And if you aren't aware, YSL has discontinued the Baby Doll mascara, which I cannot believe they did that since it has been it has been a favorite and just a cult beloved mascara for years. But for some reason, they figured they would just throw a wrench and everybody's favorite mascara. They got rid of Baby Doll. I know they are phasing out the Vinyl Couture, which I have right here. This is one, I have it in black, but they did offer this in white and um, like an electric blue, and I think there were other colors, and they just decided that they don't wanna do colored mascara anymore, so this one is also disappearing. The wand is very interesting of the curler. It is a curved wand, which I generally love, but it's sort of strange because on the outside of the curve is when you have is where you have the longer bristles. So I'm gonna try this for the first time. Okay, so honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this mascara. This is just a sample, but it has the same brush, and that's really my particular issue with it, is the wand. The formula is probably great, and I don't think it's extra clumpy or anything like that, but the bristles are just a little bit too short, and the way this was described to me is that it was a curved wand, but it was the same as Baby Doll. And I don't find that to be the case at all. I don't think this is the same as Baby Doll, which I really enjoyed that mascara. So I know they still have the Faux Sil and the Shock, which is a good mascara. I personally don't necessarily love this. I don't know, maybe I need to try the full size. Let me know what your thoughts are, but if you've tried this, let me know. Do you like it? I'm not really a huge fan right now, and I do like curved wands. That's okay, because we are going to go in with lashes. Since it is a special night out, girls' night, I'm going to pop on some falsies, and I'm using my House of Lashes. This is the Iconic Light. Okay, the glue is basically dry, and the lashes are on. I always love the way false lashes look, but I hate the way they feel, so I rarely wear them. It has to be a really special party, a really special girls' night for me to throw on lashes, but I am always happy whenever I do because it just makes you feel so fancy and they photograph so beautifully, so it's always fun to wear them. And I think last weekend everybody was in the same boat because I turned up and I'm like, man, these lashes are driving me crazy and everyone was like, I know, I threw on fake lashes too. <laughs> and we were all laughing about how we love them but we hate them at the same time. When I was in the Uber on the way down to the beach, I was taking selfies and selfie videos and trying to capture the makeup and the outfit and a little bit of glue got in my eye and I swear I was panicked for a good five minutes because my eye would not stop watering and it is the worst feeling in the world because you can't rub your eyes, that's what you wanna do, but I have this bold smoky eye, lashes, glue all over the place. It would just be a disaster if I started to rub, so I was just in the back of the Uber blinking like crazy all the way down to the beach. It was nuts. 
For lips, because we have such a bold smoky eye, the lashes, the whole nine yards going on up here, I'm going to keep it sort of simple and boring. So I'm just gonna throw on this pinky nude lipstick. This is the Rouge Percatur number 70 from YSL. And that's generally my strategy. If I do a really bold eye or a pop of color, I'll keep it neutral on the lips. And it also kind of makes things easy for touch up throughout the night. And then I am going to throw this light pink gloss on top. This is from Dior and sadly it's one of their old glosses that they don't make anymore. Last step, I am going to set my face with my Caudalie Beauty Elixir. Since you never know where the night will end up. This keeps you ready for anything. <laughs> and that completes the makeup look. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me any of your comments or your questions down below. If you by chance recreate this look, be sure to tag me on social media so I can see your photos. As always, I will be linking everything that I used today on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe.